Welcome to this lecture on wind energy technology concepts. I've chosen to give you an overview of the different concepts for extracting wind energy and not only focusing on the commercial concept. After this lecture, you should be able to list the different concepts and describe the mechanisms, mechanisms of their energy extraction. You should also be able to approximate the uh, power output from the different concepts. I've chosen to divide the uh, different concepts for extracting wind energy into four principal categories. Rotating lift-based machines, rotating drag-based machines, flying lift-based machines, and machines that are using flow-induced vibration. Let's have a look at the different concepts. The most well-known is uh, the horizontal axis wind turbine where the energy from the wind is extracted from a rotating shaft uh, that is parallel to the wind. It's rotating due to the lift forces on the airfoils of its blades. Another concept, the blades are rotated in a horizontal plane and also driven by lift uh, where the shaft is now uh, vertical. Therefore, it's called vertical axis wind turbine. Another typical uh, vertical axis turbine is the drag-based Savonius turbines where the drag on one side is larger than the drag on the other side and therefore creates a moment uh, that makes the shaft rotate. The flying lift-based machines, uh, one of them is the kite that pulls a cable that then pulls a generator that is mounted on the ground. And the last one the machines that are using uh, flow-induced vibrations uh, is the last category. We'll have a look, uh, closer look at each of these categories and give some examples in the next couple of slides. First, we'll have a look at the uh, efficiencies of the different concepts. The mechanical power is uh, from, from any concept can be calculated as uh, from the air density, the swept area from which the energy is extracted of the wind, the wind speed itself cubed, and the power coefficient. The well-known BETS limit is limiting the power coefficient due to conservation of momentum to about uh, 59%. It's simply due to the fact that the, uh, the wind turbine extracts the energy from uh, the momentum from the wind, which slows down the wind speed. And there is a uh, limit in how much you can slow down the wind and still keep an efficient uh, extraction of energy in the swept area. You can, of course, discuss, if you look at the different concepts, what is the swept area? For example, if you look at a vertical axis turbine, you could say that it has two areas of which it extracts one in the front and one when the blade is passing behind the other. Uh, blades. Of course, the energy in the, in the lateral will not be as much as in the front because it's in the shadow of the first one. So it's still, unless there is energy coming from outside into the second plane, it will still uh, have a power coefficient that is limited to uh, the bed's limit. Here are some examples of the uh, horizontal axis width turbine. This is a very old turbine, one of the old research turbines in Denmark. And they have, of course, developed uh, far from, from that time. Another example uh, of uh, rotating lift-based machines is this uh, vertical axis uh, wind turbine, a Dayeux turbine, where the energy is now extracted in the bottom uh, of the turbine instead of it up at the top of the tower in the nacelle from the generator. The swept area are quite easily calculated for these uh, because they are simply given by the rotor diameter or the, the size of the rotor. The rotating drag-based machine, the most well-known is the Savonius. It has the benefit also being able to extract energy from the bottom, but also that it is a quite safe turbine and can be uh, mounted in, uh, in urban areas. The swept area is also given by the geometry of the rotor. 
Here I'm showing the power coefficient for the different rotating concepts that have been derived over the years, both experimentally and numerically. Uh, these are some of the, the, the results that are coming out. On the uh, y-axis we have the power coefficient and on the x-axis we have the tip speed ratio. The tip speed ratio is the ratio between the tangential speed of the rotor tip due to the rotation divided by the wind speed. You see here that it in this case goes from 0 to about 7. We have the uh, modern commercial turbine which is running with a quite high tip speed ratio and it can proceed, uh, produce quite high uh, power coefficients between 40 and 50 percent. We also have the vertical axis turbine, uh, the diet type turbine, which also are running with quite high tip speed ratio and also produces relatively high uh, power coefficients. In this low range of the tip speed ratio, we find the multi-bladed rotors that can produce a high torque but not run very fast. It has a, a power coefficient up to 30% uh, and is therefore also more efficient than the drag-based machines which also have uh, low tip speed ratios, like the Savonius turbines between 10 and 15% efficiency. The flying lift-based machines are a little bit more difficult to uh, define a power coefficient based on the swept area because the swept area depends on how you are flying the kite. The principle of operation is that you are flying the kite out, it pulls the cable, and when it's, it's fully extended, you pull back the, the kite and then you fly it out again. When you pull it back, you try to uh, minimize the, the aerodynamic forces and lift on the kite. There, this is the pumping kite uh, with a cable pull. You can also extract the energy from the kite by mounting a propeller or you could say a horizontal axis turbines on the kite itself and then fly it in circles and extract the energy from the generators on the kite and then you have to transmit uh, the uh, electricity generated through the cable to the ground. For these concepts, the, uh, the, the power coefficient or the power produced is based on the area of the kite and the lift coefficient of the kite, which is typically in the order of one, and it also based on the glide ratio of the kite itself, which is in the range of 5 to 20, depending on the design. A uh, high aspect ratio uh, kite or uh, plane uh, like this one will have a high uh, glide ratio while a typical kite that you see on the beaches will have a lower uh, glide ratio. The last one is uh, flow induced vibrations that can generate electricity for example by making a beam vibrate and then have piece of ceramic material that extract the energy. If we look at the motion itself of the tip of the airfoil, we see that it is vibrating due to the cross flow over it. If we look at the area we should use to calculate the power coefficient, we should use the swept area as we uh, look when we look at conservation of momentum. If I take this example from Cornell University and the paper shown here, they have shown that they can generate uh, a couple of milliwatts with a vibration of 8 uh, centimeters and a spanwise uh, airfoil that is uh, about 13.6 centimeters. It has the benefit of being able to start this particular one at very low wind speeds. And if I calculate the power coefficient for this example in this paper, I get a quite low power coefficient but it has the benefit of being able to start at low wind speed. It has very few moving parts and it can therefore be used in, for example, to power remote sensing and other devices. But it's still in milliwatts. We're not talking megawatts. Finally, we come to the summary uh, of this lecture. In this lecture, you should have learned that there are the concept of extracting wind energy can be extracted into four different categories. The rotating lift-based machines, the rotating drag-based machines, the flying lift-based machines, and machines that are extracting the energy 
due to uh, flow-induced vibrations. The power output from each concept will depend on the area they sweep and their power coefficient. That is, in fact, how we define the power coefficient. They are all subject to conservation of momentum, and therefore they also have each of them different power coefficients. 